Hello everyone, and let me try that again. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Minecraft Pacifist, where we try to be kind to all the passive mobs around us, so long as they socially distance. This episode, we're going to get to work improving life in the valley here for our farmers. They spent the first few episodes of their lives locked up in their homes, and well, we've only recently let them roam free. But life must be pretty dull just working in this tiny little plot all day and having to live in this rundown and boring village. So we're going to build them, or a few of them, a nicer place over in this area where they can work on a much more beautiful wheat field, which we'll eventually order deliver to our central storage facility. Remember, our goal in this playthrough is to automate as much as we can, although it has to be in an ethical way that treats these mobs well. Look at them. There's like eight farmers there tending to like, what, 20 wheat crops? Pretty abysmal. Yeah, we better get out. We better get them out of there soon. So let's get our gear back on and jump into it. We have a lot of work to do today. Just like every episode, we're going to start off with a little adventuring to scope out uh, the area around us and have a look at some of the new terrain generation. Today, we're going to be heading off back south to where we found that village a few episodes ago. So let's grab our map and get to it. Okay, so I've spent ages looking for this map, and I think the only place I haven't looked is here in the donkey. Not on donkey. Ugh. <laughs> this is the map! I'm not even sure I've checked this chest yet. I can't believe I finally found it. This is ridiculous. Oh my god, I've wasted so much time looking for this thing. I searched every chest I have. Over in the caves, in the nether, the the village and the tree farm, and the chests in the house, I've like double and triple checked. Ugh. Well, we got there in the end. And typically it starts raining as soon as we're about to head out. Ah, that really tested my patience. I usually consider myself a pretty patient guy, but that was too much. We're not going to delay anymore. Next episode, I'm definitely going to build that storage facility. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Looks like I found a spider spawner here right next to the surface. But we've already got a double, so we don't need this one. Has this ever happened to you guys in real life? I'm literally standing on the border of the rain. <laughs> now I'm dry. Now I'm wet. Now I'm dry. Now I'm wet. Dry. Wet. <laughs> Just easily amused, maybe. There they are, those Lord of the Ringsy mountains. Wow, they're gorgeous. So about this storage facility that I mentioned, I've been working on something in creative, and I think you guys are really, really going to like it. It's pretty cool. It's definitely my best build yet. Um, but what it is, I'm going to keep a secret. I've got to keep you guys coming back, don't I? I guess we already alluded this one. All right, we're out of our map border now, so we can open our new map. We, which is the map of our house that I forgot we made. Looks like we've got to head home again and make a new map. I'm quite bad at this game. Oh, whoops, <laughs> that's the wrong way. We can return you back to your family and or friends. So I brought myself a cartography table and a new map. So we can draw this one real quick. There we go. And zoom out a bunch of times and have the, the, the biggest zoom out possible. We did it. <laughs> it's definitely not the greatest start, but um, I suppose it's about the journey and not the destination. I hope. Now let's get back to work uncovering as much of this new map as possible. And I'll stop along the way with the highlights. Here we are, almost at the top of the Lord of the Ringsy type mountains. Look at that view. Oh my god, this is incredible. We're right at the edge of the savannah and jungle biomes, and the view here is just amazing. What do you guys think? Should we maybe try to build something here? I'm not sure what I would do if I'm honest, but I love the idea of this place. A really large mountain range with a mouth opening up into the jungle. Maybe this could be our new mine site. I don't know. If you've got any suggestions, please let me know. There's some games where you kind of ask yourself if you're the baddie. 
like the world existed just fine before you arrived, but then you disturbed the balance and all of a sudden you got all this blood on your hands. I don't know, I guess in Minecraft the hostile mobs do want to attack um, the villagers if they get a chance. So that makes a preemptive attack okay, I suppose. Then again, they don't spawn any if you're not around. I don't know. It's tough to try and play ethically. Some things you just have to forget. Last time we were down in the jungle, I forgot to grab any vines. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, to be honest, but the hoarder in me just wants to have at least one of everything, I guess. I did grab a jungle sapling, and I'm not sure if you remember, but the tree that grew from it, it didn't give me any more saplings, so I suppose I'll grab a few of them too. Oh, hey, it's a jungle cat, an ocelot. Hey there, kitty. Don't worry, I'm not going to try and domesticate you. Oh, it's a cute little bird. I don't have any seeds. I want to fill up my whole farm with these guys. Ah, uh, we got one here. Hopefully I got enough. Yeah, we got a green one. You're coming with me, little buddy. This bamboo is super thick. It's really tough to just navigate through it. I'm thinking we'll probably find a panda in here though. Oh, what a cutie. Oh my god, that's so adorable. Now, don't try this at the zoo. Even in Minecraft, I think these pandas can kill you. And even for their own sake, we shouldn't be messing with them. Nah, you can have the rest of these, I don't need them. Oh, apparently they don't want them either. <laughs> Get out of my boat! I used to be so terrified of these guys. I thought with their big teeth they'd bite me or something. I got caught out a few episodes back trying to build that pumpkin house because um, I couldn't find any green dye. So right now we're on the lookout for a desert so I can find myself some cactus. Is this a desert? It looks pretty large. Nah, it's just a big pile of sand, bummer. That's a shame. Turns out there was a desert just around the corner. Yeah, that's definitely cactus over there. Let's chuck down a boat and head over. Oh wow, what a gorgeous backdrop for a sunset. It's amazing how beautiful Minecraft can be, even without shaders. Not sure what the right tool is for a cactus, but when in doubt, swing a bed. Cool, this is my first time finding a coral reef. I gotta go grab some sea pickles. Oh, you can use them to make lime dye, that's so cool. I was just gonna use them as candles. All right, I gotta try this out with some shaders. I imagine it's gonna look pretty epic. Oh, that's a bit dark. Let's try Continuum. I haven't used this one before. Oh, that's a bit better. Pretty wavy. It's a real psychedelic and a water experience. Be difficult to see. This is this has taken quite a while. Okay, so that seemed to have break the game. <laughs> I don't have any pickles in my inventory, so it looks like we'll might have just lost a few minutes, which isn't too bad. I had a little panic attack that the whole world would be corrupted and I'll have to um, go back to find a, a backup world. But I think maybe it's just because I'm using sodium and not optifine. And I think I've heard that not all shaders are compatible, so not a big drama. I'll just have to stay away from continuum. Whoa! That guy's mad. <laughs> Alright, I think we can outswim them at least. Just grab a few more pickles and then get outie. Now oh, we found our first swamp. God, these are ugly biomes. I really don't like what they do to the water. I kind of don't get why Mojang put them in the game. I mean, who'd want to build out here? I just realised we lost our bird. What the hell? Was that because I went underwater or was it because the game crashed? 
Either way, that really sucks. I'll have to go find another one, another episode. Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> let's go the long way around. See, so ugly. <laughs> of all the nice builds I've seen online, you never see anyone build in a swamp. I think that kind of proves my point. I don't know. I'm I'm yet to be convinced otherwise. Oh no! Ugh, that that reminds me of that stupid white power sign that those fascist idiots do online. I wish I had some TNT so I could go blow that thing up. Yeah, I cannot abide this. I've got to go destroy it. I don't want that nonsense in my world. FYI, the Minecraft pacifist is Antifa, and I hope you are too. There. Try to make sense out of that. <laughs> I was going for a peace sign, but I just couldn't be stuff wasting my time making anything better. I got much more important things to do. <laughs> I guess that's not how they breed. Oh, maybe I'll grab this beehive while we're here. My other one got deleted. Oh, I, actually, I don't want to aggro them. I better not. But we'll work on bees in an episode or two, I promise. We're home. I'd recognize that, that booty anywhere. See, I told you I'd destroy that ugly pumpkin patch. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. And then now that we've got them automated. And uh, I should probably tidy up this as well. I tend to just jump on a few blocks every time I run by. But maybe this is a more efficient way to, to dry the soil out. That's not a bad portion of this map that we've uncovered in just one episode. In the future, we'll put all these maps together on a big wall and, um, and label all the important spots, etc. But for now, it's time for my favourite part of the episode. We're going to head down to the village and get to work on a new house for some of these wheat farmers. Uh, forgive me in advance if this takes a while. Um, I've never built anything this complex before. Even the barn wasn't, wasn't that hard to build. But hopefully it turns out alright and you enjoy the montage. See you soon.
What are you doing? Please don't go down there. Stop it. Oh, it's so difficult to move around here. Uh, you idiot. We took a llama with you. Oh my god. I better go down and help this idiot out. At least they left me a leash or a lead, whatever it's called. I've been wanting a lead, but wasn't going to kill one of them to get it. Where are you off to? I think they've just walked off the job. <laughs> Good on them. <laughs> they've had enough. I'll look after their llamas in case they have a change of heart. Come on. Yes, yes. Okay, we got him. Come on, the other one should follow it. Where are you going? Don't you dare fall down there. Okay. <laughs> we'll secure this one and head back for the other. Wait here, I'll be right back. That was an ordeal. You two stay here, I'll figure out what to do with you. <laughs> much, much later. You're testing my patience. Turns out we didn't have any blackstone, and apparently you can't use deep slate to make buttons. So here we are back in the nether for a little bit of gold trading to see if we um, can't get some. Just wondering how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost us. Alright, we'll get a bunch of other stuff while we're at it, so I'm not too fussed. We've got more than a whole stack of gold bars, so I'm sure it'll be enough. Alright, you're probably wondering why buttons. Well, there you go. Since uh, the farms are going to be, since the farmers are going to be free roaming, I need to try to make the place as mob proof as possible. And uh, we can do that on the roof in general by having stairs and half slab blocks and stuff like that. But for full blocks like these, it's blackstone buttons and acacia wood buttons on the copper. I reckon they'll blend right in and you won't even be able to see them from the floor. Whew, that's the hard part done. Now it's time to plant the crops. So the farmers living here are going to be collecting all our wheat for us, hopefully in large amounts. I believe if you fill up their inventories with seeds, then when it comes to harvest time, they um, won't be able to pick up the wheat, but will instead just replenish their stocks of seeds. So the wheat will just be sitting there on the ground waiting for us to collect it, and we'll use a hopper minecart running underneath just like we did with the pumpkins. Just this little flat portion of the map here. And that'll all connect via water stream to our main agricultural storage building. Which we haven't built yet, but um, we'll get to it very soon. I'm not going to populate this house today because... Well, it takes eight stacks of seeds to fill up each villager's in inventory. And I've probably only got enough for one villager, so... I'll just use that and do a manual harvest first, and then we can bring over a couple at a time. I'd also have to take a fair bit of care to make sure that mobs can't spawn in here um, and hurt the farmers. So I probably have to fence the entire area off and light it up to make it spawn proof. Time for the big reveal. And we're obviously going to do this with shaders on, although I reckon it still looks pretty good without. Check out how gorgeous this valley is starting to look. What we've done today with the wheat, we'll do a little bit later in future episodes with all the other crops. But unfortunately we need to keep all these crops separated. Otherwise the farmers will start planting in the wrong area and one crop will eventually dominate and push out all the others. I'd be curious to see what that would look like though, so maybe we could test that in a small area. Look at that measly plot of wheat. What amateurs. It's time to step into the big league, guys. And then take a look at this beautiful beast over here. And no, I'm not talking about my donkey who I guess we'll just tie up. We don't need them for the tour. I'm so proud of this. I, I could not be happier to be honest. So what do you guys think of the house? Villages and, <laughs> and the, those in the comment section. It's obviously a real improvement over the previous uh, domiciles. But that's a pretty low bar. Let's take a closer look. I've worked a little bit on the path. Um, not sure I'd say I'm satisfied with it, but it's pretty good right now. Yeah, feet, but please wipe your feet. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. 
I'm glad to see they've already formed themselves into a collective and they're making all the decisions together. We have no room for hierarchy here in the valley, and I think that's the mark of uh, any real civilized society. I probably don't need these lights, but um, it does make the place look a bit nicer. Are you guys shocked? I've actually done the inside of a building for once. I think we're going to have to start decorating the insides of all our builds and finally shake off this bad habit that we formed. Yeah, I think it's pretty cozy. I wouldn't mind living there. It's, I'm a bit jealous. It's better than my starter home. And it's just for a bunch of NPCs. That's one house down. We still have three to go for the other crops. And I'll spread them out around the valley so they'll each uh, technically form their own town and have their own town centres to, to mingle around after work. All right, that's it. That's the episode. You guys can go now. Although you're welcome to stay if you want and maybe catch up on the previous episodes. If you like this episode, please consider giving it a like and possibly even a subscribe if you'd want to see more in the future. Be sure to come back next time for that really big surprise that I've been foreshadowing. It will be, by a long stretch, the largest build I've done yet. And it's going to be the centerpiece of the valley here that kind of brings everything else together. If you think you know what it might be, why not have a guess and I'll put your name on a plaque and dedicate the build to you. So why not have a stab at it in the comments. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you had fun. I sure did. Please leave your thoughts in the comments and have a great day. See you next time.